It's Friday, January the 2nd, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and this is episode number 65 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning December the 28th, 2014. Since it's the start of a brand new year and the world of future cars has been a little quiet this week, we're going to do our usual start of the year show, which means detailing some of the news that's happened this week, as well as giving you a bit of an insight into 2015 too. TEN is brought to you by freeconference.co.uk, bringing you the latest in transportation news with the future of low-cost conference calls. Make conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of one local call. Visit www.freeconference.co.uk today. On Christmas Day, Tesla CEO Elon Musk finally fleshed out some more details of the long-awaited battery upgrade package he's been promising owners of Tesla's very first car, the two-seat Roadster. What's more, the upgrade package, which Tesla is calling the Roadster 3.0 upgrade, will turn any of Tesla's 2,600 Tesla Roadsters into a super long-distance plug-in, capable of traveling up to 400 miles on a single charge when driven at around 50 miles per hour. To achieve this, Tesla's upgrade upgrade package includes a whole new battery chemistry for the Roadster, as well as an aftermarket upgrade to the car's aerodynamics, wheels and brakes to decrease drag and increase efficiency. Musk says we'll seal a real-life demonstration of the Roadster upgrade this month on a non-stop drive between Los Angeles and San Francisco, but with no pricing or ordering details announced, we can't help but think this is more of a very clever publicity stunt than anything else. It's finally 2015, which, as fans of Back to the Future will tell you, is the year of the hoverboard, flying cars, self-lacing shoes and Mr. Fusion. But while those things and more may not reach the market this year as that film famously predicted, software giant Google has announced that it will begin real-world testing of its driverless, pod-like, two-seat cars this month in California. Built on Google's own design, the 100-strong fleet of self-driving prototypes are currently best suited to low-speed city streets or gated communities. But they not only represent Google's first custom-built self-driving car, but also the first self-driving cars to be tested on the roads which don't have any of the conventional controls you'd normally find in a car. We're sure we'll see more from Google and its self-driving cars later this month, but we're pretty excited to see this futuristic vision edge ever closer to commercial reality. It was a well-known deduction added to the US federal tax code back when President George W. Bush was still in the White House, and one which even earned itself a mention in Chris Payne's seminal documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? It was a tax credit which allowed businesses and sole traders to write off the cost of purchasing vehicles over £6,000 in weight against their annual US tax bill, to the tune of $500,000 per business per year. And back at the start of 2014, that tax credit was dramatically cut to just $25,000. But as we welcome in the new year, we also welcome back that massive half million dollar per business tax credit, with the news that it has yet again been signed back into federal tax code. Cue much gnashing of teeth and wailing from environmentalists and much whooping from rolling coal fans, because this makes it something of a no-brainer for businesses to buy the biggest, most polluting pickup truck they can instead of a nice environmentally friendly ride instead. Luckily for plug-in fans, existing federal tax credits remain for plug-in vehicles, but if you're a hydrogen fuel cell fan, you'll need to know that incentives for fuel cell vehicles weren't continued this year, so you're on the hook to pay the whole bill. Mitsubishi's Outlander plug-in hybrid, the world's first plug-in hybrid with CHAdeMO DC quick charge technology fitted as standard, has just been given official approval in Japan to operate as an emergency backup power supply for Japanese homes fitted with the smart V to H vehicle to home power system. Designed by a consortium of electric vehicle manufacturers and utility companies in Japan, the smart V to H system allows anyone with a compatible CHAdeMO equipped car the ability to power their homes directly from their car in the event of a brownout or natural disaster, providing a week or more of emergency power for basic lighting and cooking. As Green Car Congress reported this week, the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV is the first plug-in hybrid to be approved to work with the various smart V2H systems currently on the market in Japan. Previously, only Nissan's Leaf electric car and EN V200 electric van 
along with the Mitsubishi Aimeev electric car were approved for use in the smart V to H installations. It's worth noting, however, that while the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV does have an onboard gasoline engine, which can provide motive power alongside its 12 kilowatt hour onboard lithium ion battery pack, the crossover SUV's engine is disabled while it's plugged into a DC quick charging station or smart V to H installation. But since you can charge the battery pack up with the charging cable disconnected, we think it's still a pretty neat solution that could provide power for many weeks. 2014 may have set new sales records for electric cars and plug-in hybrids, but the plug-in car world still spent the majority of last year trying to find ways of making the charging infrastructure needed to support plug-in cars profitable. So far, the majority of charging networks have either relied on third-party funding, such as governmental development funds or associations with utility companies, or a pay-as-you-go business model in order to bring the money in. But now one company from the UK has turned to crowdfunding for the money it needs to keep growing. Enter Podpoint, a UK-based manufacturer and operator of charging stations for electric cars, which has just completed a £1.2 million crowdfunding round on crowdfunding investment site Cedars. With a pre-investment valuation of more than £16 million, the firm was offering crowdfunded investors a collaborative 6.89% equity for the £1.2 million, but actually closed its funding round with 104.4% of the money it initially sought to find. The challenge now? Increasing its reliability and public image among plug-in car drivers, who often criticise Podpoint as one of the more unreliable charging station providers in the UK. We'll be watching to see just what happens next. As usual, we're going to spend the last few minutes of our inaugural show of the year looking at some of the stories we think we'll be covering in 2015, covering everything from car launches through to industry firsts and the downright wacky. So stay put and we'll do our best to rattle off as many cogent predictions as possible. First up, we're going to look at the upcoming 2016 Chevy Volt, which will be unveiled in just a few weeks' time at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. While we already know that the next-gen Volt will go further per charge and get better fuel economy, we're going to predict it will come with a lower price tag, spelling trouble for Nissan's all-electric Leaf. Unlike the current car, expect an entry-level Volt for less than $25,000 after incentives. If 2014 was the year of self-driving demonstrations, 2015 will be the year we start to see self-driving car technology leave the lab and become part of the mainstream automotive world. While we won't see fully self-driving cars by the end of the year, we expect every major automaker to offer some form of autonomous driving tech, like lane keep assist, on all but the most basic of models by the end of the year. Just as we're about to see a new Volt this year, we'll see Nissan ready its 2017 Leaf for launch later this year, with a far improved range over current models, at least we think so. Expect range to increase to a real-world 150 miles per charge, a decrease in nerdy tech features, and perhaps even a more integrated car wing system. Like the Volt, we're going to predict an entry-level price of around 25000 with high-end models adding an additional 10000 on top. 2014 was the year in which Elon Musk took to Twitter more than ever before to release details about Tesla's upcoming grand master plans. And we think 2015 will be no different when it comes to Tesla tidbits. But this year, we think we'll either see Elon Musk prove unequivocally that he's a misunderstood master genius or a little bit mad. Yes, we noticed that robots will kill us all and automated charging cable tweets you made, Elon. It'll crazy. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the evolved transport news that's fit to print and subscribe to our channel and other shows by heading to www.youtube.com forward slash transportevolved. And if you're interested, don't forget to join us live on Sunday at 1800 hours UTC for the Transport Evolved panel talk show, where we'll be discussing these stories and more. You can join us live via www.transportevolved.com or head to our YouTube channel to watch the live stream. And don't forget to visit our show sponsors at www.freeconference.co.uk. It doesn't matter if you're making work conference calls to New York, 
or family calls to New Zealand. Free conference lets you make and join telephone conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of a local call. To sign up and get calling today, visit freeconference.co.uk to set up your first free call. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, stay juiced up.